With the introduction of the Ruckus Unleashed mobile app, managing your Unleashed network at home is simpler and more powerful than ever before. The Unleashed mobile app allows you to perform common management tasks such as creating wireless networks, renaming or upgrading the software on your access points, and much more. The application is available for both Android and iOS platform users. Now, let's cover the installation of the mobile app on iOS and take a quick tour. Installing the Ruckus Unleashed app is pretty straightforward. We're going to open the App Store on our iPhone, and then within the App Store we're going to search, and we'll just search for Ruckus and Unleashed comes up as an option in Auto Search. Here the Ruckus Unleashed app appears. We'll go ahead and tap Get. We'll double click to install it, and we'll let the installation finish. Now that the download is complete, we'll tap Open, and this is going to open the Unleashed app for the first time. The first pop-up we're met with is allowing notifications. Now, I would suggest that you say yes, this can notify you about certain events within your Unleashed network at home. The next option is about opting in or out and sharing analytics data to help improve the product. This is, of course, entirely up to you. Since our Unleashed network is up and operating, we're gonna tap on Manage Network. At this point, we'll be asked to log in with the credentials we've created, admin, and our password. Now you can also enable Face ID or Touch ID or the Android equivalent, and you can use that to log in as well. You just need to tap the button each time and it will authenticate you that way. We will go through each of these options in detail, but the first one we're gonna look at are our WLANs or our wireless networks. We have one configured currently and it's called home. So as we look for wireless networks within our home, we'll see a home being broadcast. As long as we have the WPA2 password, we can connect to that. We see that we have a total of two clients. We'll go into that in detail later. But the cool thing here is there's a plus sign by WLAN. We can add an additional wireless network here if we need to. Let's take a look at our wireless LAN. So we'll tap on home and here it takes us to a new screen where we can see not only how many clients are currently connected, but we can also see traffic for the past hour or 24 hours, whatever we choose. Up above we have a pencil. This is how you edit your wireless LAN. I'll show you some details in there in a minute. We have a power button. Now this one's important. You can turn your wireless network off from this application. If you only have one, I strongly recommend you do not do this. It will turn the radio off and all clients that are currently connected to that wireless LAN will be disconnected. We have an option to delete the wireless LAN. That's the trash can. And then next to it is a refresh button. You can refresh the data. It will update the clients connected and it will update the traffic graph as well. Where we see two clients, we can tap on that and it will take us into a screen with further information about the currently connected clients to that individual wireless LAN. We can see who's connected and how long they've been connected for. All right, we're gonna tap on back and we're gonna go in and edit our wireless LAN. I wanna show you some things here. So we're gonna open the advanced options, but at the top, we can change the name of our network if we choose. We can also change the password for the wireless LAN if we want to. Uplink and downlink rate limit. These are probably not necessary for a home installation, but if you're a more advanced user, you might wanna play with this. The 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz radios can be turned on and off independently. This is something that you might wanna consider if you have older legacy devices, but most of the time people leave them on, they don't cause a problem. Now you do have application recognition control in a home. Again, you probably don't need this, but a cool feature here is that you have a service schedule. So you can set your wireless LAN to be always on, always off, or you can set it on a schedule so that it's on and off at different times during the day. We'll have some videos later on that you can look at. This will show this in more detail. We're gonna tap back and then back again so we're at the home screen. Here we wanna look at our access point. The access point shows us its name and the clients attached to it. It also shows us that it's online. Now, if we open the access point, we can see more information here. Again, we can edit the access point, we can turn it on and off, delete it, or even refresh the data that's shown on the screen. We have an uptime, its role. Now, if you have multiple access points in your house that are configured in a mesh, you might see different roles here based on the access point you're connected to. We see the model, the serial number, the current firmware version that's running, the IP address, the MAC address, clients, and traffic. 
Now, something to note, access points and wireless LANs, if you have multiple wireless LANs configured, you can look at data for each of those wireless LANs that are configured independently. However, if you're looking at the access point, it's gonna show you data for all of your clients and all of your wireless LANs in one picture. All right, let's tap on the edit button. Now here we can give the access point a name. This is really useful if we have multiple access points in our home, we could label one downstairs and one upstairs. Now we can also adjust the radios. We can adjust those independently and turn those on or off. Unless you're having any kind of active issue that you're working with Ruckus support, I would recommend leaving them on. Let's go back to the home screen and take a look at the clients now. We have two clients connected and I'm just gonna pick my iPhone. We'll go in and take a look at that and see what it shows us. In this screen, we see how long it's been connected. We see its MAC address and its IP address. We also see which AP it's connected to. Now this is why naming your access points can be important because if we have multiples in our home and we name them differently, we'll know which access point this client is connected to. We can see the radio functionality of the device. This is the 2.4 gigahertz or the five gigahertz that we saw earlier with the radio that we can turn on or off. We also see the channel that it's connected to, the host name, and the vendor. Now some other things we can do is we do have an edit button at the top. This isn't necessarily editing the client, but it does allow us to give it a nickname. We can block clients here. If we see a client connected to our network that we don't want connected, we can block it. You can also turn this off at any time. The star is to mark that client as a favorite. And then there's also a refresh button so that you can refresh information on the client if you need to. That's it for the tour. Thanks for watching. We hope you found it useful and be sure to check the channel as there's other content that shows you how to take full advantage of your unleashed network at home.